I have to admit, the only thing that intrigued me about this movie, well, two things. I really like Billy Crystal and I really like Bette Midler. They are some of the greatest personalities that came out of the late 70s and we got to enjoy them in the 80s and the 90s. And two, I kind of am a sucker for very wholesome, manipulative, predictable, family-friendly films. I am. And here is my review of Parental Guidance. It's a tough beat, but somebody's got it. It's been over 10 years since we've seen Bette Midler and Billy Crystal really have a starring role in a film. I think the last movie for Bette Midler was in 2000. Billy Crystal didn't really have a big starring role. He's been in things, you know, he's been around, you know, hosting the Oscars. He's, he's incredible when he's hosting the Oscars. Both these talents are incredible when they're doing live stuff. But Billy Crystal hasn't really made a movie that uh, has been a starring role since 2002. I believe that was Analyze This or That. It was like the sequel to that film. So I, I did go into this movie hoping maybe I'd get something that was in just... You know, I, I just wanted to see a movie that was called Parental Guidance, which is PG. It is PG. And uh, I didn't really have any expectations going into this movie. I, I just hoped that it would be fun and light and friendly and make me feel good about, you know, parenthood and make me feel good about uh, families and the family unit and the importance of loving each other no matter what our differences are. Having all said those wonderful things about life and whatever, this film is god awful. It is terrible. It is a contender for me right now to be one of the worst films of 2012. I usually, when, it's, when I don't like a movie, I kind of just want to hurry up, talk about it, get it done with, walk away, and never repeat it again. So I did write some notes, so I figured I'd at least try and, you know, bring up a few things so I could just forget about this movie and be done with it. Marissa Tomei is the daughter, the only daughter of these two characters, and because of certain events, they all have to come together, and of course we've got the old school over here with, with uh, Billy and Bette, and we got the new school with Marissa Tomei and her husband, Tom Everett Scott, who I think is a good actor, but wasted in this film. Tony Hawk is also in this movie, and I just want to point out that I think Tony Hawk is very talented and uh, incredible athlete and skateboarder, but as an actor, you know, just don't... Uh, the music was done by Mark Shaman. I believe that's how you say his name. A very talented man who's written Hairspray, the music to the musical Hairspray, South Park. Uh, I don't know if he's won an Oscar yet, but he's done a lot of music for Rob Reiner. He's a very talented person, but the music in here is just so phony and fake and just sappy. And I know I, you know, I said I didn't mind sappy sometimes, but it just phoned in, you know, carbon copied crap. Uh, the kids in this film are not terrible, but they're just annoying. There's no character development. They're just standard, and they're stupid, and they give nothing to offer in at all. Uh, here's a here, here's here's a ter here's one of the most terrible ideas of this film. The house that this family lives in is a prototype. It's like an eye house. So it has all these. It, it, it's like Big Brother right in your very own home. Terrible idea, just disturbing, a horrible gimmick to use in this film. If somebody invited me over to their house and said, come on over, I have the eye house, I would say some really terrible words. No, I'm not showing up. Uh, well, let's meet at the park. Let's hang out at the park or somewhere else. But we're not hanging out at your house anytime soon. Very, very stupid. I mean, who came up with this movie? It's just disturbing. It is terrifying. It is not vulgar. Amazing. This movie is very family friendly, but do not take your families. There are movies out right now that I highly recommend you go see instead. I didn't fall in love with Rise of the Guardians. That's a better film than this. Uh, Life of Pi is very troubling and disturbing and challenging. That's a much better to take your kids. The Hobbit, which is PG-13 for just scary images and terrifying situations. Take your children to go see The Hobbit before you ever will take your children to see this piece of rotting flesh. It is forgettable. The parenting styles on both sides are a joke. It doesn't make me want to be a parent. It doesn't make me want to uh, have kids. I really love Billy Crystal and Bette Midler. Bette Midler was in some really great movies in the 80s, including Down and Out and Beverly Hills. And Billy Crystal had some huge hits, like when Harry Met Sally and City Slickers. This movie is just uh, a big, sore, you know, just a big, huge zit on the amazing career of these two people. And I highly recommend, do not see this film, avoid it at all costs. It is one of the worst movies of the year. I hated this experience. If I had children, I would take them to go see something 
I, I almost would take them to see anything else. There was a family in this movie, and I have no idea why they left, but th about 30 minutes before the movie was going to be over, they actually walked off and left. Now, they could have all had to go to the bathroom, that's fine. But they never came back, so that's quite interesting to me. I'm going to give this movie, Parental Guidance, one star. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook, and please go to WeLiveFilm.com and subscribe right here on YouTube to WeLiveFilm, and also go to WhoYouTube.com. I sure hope this movie is not successful so we don't get parental strongly cautions if your children under 13 restricted and no children admitted under the age of 17.